Hi everybody, my name is Nina D. I am here today to show you a little bit about electric violins and effects pedals and how you can make that happen in a simple to very complicated way. I've been playing Yamaha electric instruments for, oh, at least 15 years. I started out with the early SV models and I've progressed, as you can kind of see over here, a little bit of my collection. Throughout the years, I've played the EV, the EV205, and then finally what I'm going to demonstrate for you today, my YEV205. I like to play the five string model so that I can cover the viola and violin parts at the same time when I'm performing or recording. I produce a touring show called Femmes of Rock, which is basically a, a string quartet playing all rock music, utilizing all different sorts of effects pedals and special arrangements of music like Jimi Hendrix and Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd and The Who for string instruments. Prior to uh, the pandemic, we were touring quite extensively. I also produce a corporate act called Bella Electric Strings, performing mainly for corporate entertainment when companies would bring their trade shows or meetings to Las Vegas or elsewhere. I arrange all of the quartet charts for the group. I also arrange all of the music that we perform in the Femmes of Rock touring show. So I guess you could say I'm a violinist, a producer, and an arranger. My first experience with an electric violin was when I was about 13 years old. I watched Jimi Hendrix play the Star Spangled Banner in a Woodstock documentary, and I thought, oh my God, I need to try that. My father had a, a Marshall amplifier in the house, and I had a, a very cheap non-Yamaha electric violin at the time that I found on eBay when I was a kid, and I plugged it into his amplifier, messed with some of the settings on it, was able to get a distortion and a feedback kind of a sound, and uh, when my parents came home from work, I played them the Star Spangled Banner in the style of Jimi Hendrix. I'll demonstrate that a little bit later for you guys. I started writing arrangements for my little string quartet that I had in middle school at about that point of popular music and rock music. As I got a little bit older and got into college, I started to develop my effects pedals a little bit more. Uh, I started out very small and tentatively with some stomp boxes, and eventually I progressed into some pretty complicated digital boards and recording software. What I'm going to do for you today is demonstrate from very easy to a little more difficult what all the pros and cons of the effects that I have so far utilized in my career. I'm going to be demonstrating uh, a couple different rigs today on my YEV205. This is one of the newer models of Yamaha violins. I've been performing on it in our show for, oh, maybe about a year and a half now. This violin I enjoy playing on because it is a good enough quality to perform professionally on while still being affordable enough for students or educators. Right off the bat with this instrument, there's something that you need to be aware of. On the back, there's a button right here. When pushed in, it kind of puts it into active mode and you can control the output and the volume of the instrument with this knob right below it. When pushed out, it's in kind of what we call passive mode, meaning that you're passing your signal straight through and this knob is not going to control your violin uh, volume or output at that point. The simplest and easiest way to hear yourself when you're playing an electric violin and also add some basic simple effects is to plug directly into an amplifier. I'm going to be performing today for you through this Fender Super Champ. This is roughly a retail, I don't know, five, six hundred dollar amplifier, so it's probably medium middle of the road. And this amp allows you to have two separate channels uh, with a foot switch here where you can click between a clean channel and a channel that you can use different amp models and effects models. You can also find similar features on much more cost effective and smaller practice amps. I have a little Marshall amp sitting in the corner over there, which was one of my very first practice amps, a uh, much cheaper price point. It also has some built-in effects, basic, basic things that you can do to change the sound of the instrument and EQ it. So I'm going to take a quarter inch cable here. I'm going to plug it into the back of the electric violin. I'm going to plug it into the amplifier. You want to make sure that the, the volume is turned down on your amp when you do this. You're going to get some really nasty noise. So now I've lowered the volume on the amp so that we don't hear a ton of feedback. And I'm going to plug it into the amplifier and then slowly turn the volume up. What you're going to hear now is the electric violin plugged directly into the amplifier. It's going to sound a, a little bit thinner and a little more nasally than an acoustic violin would because we're going to need to recreate some of the natural reverberation of the hollowness and the wood uh, with artificial sounds. <laughs> First thing I'm going to do, and the first thing you should always do, is to EQ your instrument. With an electric violin, I usually like to roll off some of the highs. I like to boost the bass and take some of the mids out a little bit. So this amp model, and even most cheaper amp models, will have an EQ feature, and I'm going to do that right now.
Now I'm going to click on the button that allows me to put some basic effects on through the amplifier. And what I've added now is a tiny bit of reverb, which is going to give the electric violin the kind of sound as if you're in um, a small concert hall. Also, a few other effects you can get just from the amplifier, such as a delay effect. And when you're using delay, you can sometimes set it to the tempo of the song you're playing, or you can give it a basic delay effect, which is what I've done here. You get a little more depth to your sound because you have a, a trail off and a, a repeated sound that you can make as close to or as far away from the actual note you play, depending on the effect you're going for in the song. There's also a chorus effect on this amp, which I'll demonstrate. <laughs> You may use this in conjunction with some other effects when you're trying to achieve a lead guitar sound on your violin. Lastly, I'm going to show you a tremolo effect, which also is meant for very specific pieces of music. You wouldn't use this in an everyday setting. So what I'm going to do now is to switch over to the channel that has the amp models on it and I'm going to add some gain to the effect and you can hear how that sounds with just the amplifier. So now I've switched back to the clean channel of the amplifier. I'm going to show you phase two of how you can use effects with the violin, which is custom stomp boxes. You can make this setup as small or large as you want. You could use one pedal, you could use 30 pedals. You patch them together with tiny quarter inch cable patches and you plug your violin into the first thing in the chain. And then you take your out quarter inch cable and you plug it into an amplifier or into a recording software or into whatever you're using to take the signal out. So the first thing I'm going to do here is the same thing that I would do on the amplifier or with a digital board that I'll show you later. I'm going to build my clean sound because when you go directly through anything, it's just a little bit boring. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to EQ, which I've already done on this amplifier here and I explained earlier. So the second thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of reverb and I have a Boss reverb pedal here. I'm going to click that on. It's going to give it just a little bit of a concert setting sound. <laughs> And I'm going to add a slight bit of delay, and this is also to give it a little bit of a natural delay sound. This isn't set to sound too crazy. You can set it to sound crazy, where you hear a lot of things pinging off each other for a long time, but this is just to give it a more natural sound. one really cool pedal here and this is called a POG2. This is a polyphonic octave generator. You can take up to two octaves below, octaves above the violin. You can make it sound almost like an organ. I'm going to demonstrate what that sounds like for you now. And finally, what I'm going to show you is a metal zone pedal, which is going to be an overdrive. It's going to add a little bit of fuzz to the sound. Mm -hmm. 
and you can use that in conjunction with a couple other things that are going to sound really super cool. This here is a Digitech Whammy, and I'm going to show you what a dive bomb sounds like. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do when I'm soloing is to play a fuzz pedal along with a wah-wah sound. So I have a vox wah over here, I have the metal zone pedal, and of course built upon my reverb and my delay and my EQ of my clean sound, I'm going to click on the wah and give you a short demonstration of what that sounds like. <laughs> So now that you've heard me perform through the amplifier with the built-in effects and also through the stomp boxes, which are additional effects, you've kind of gotten the idea about how modular that setup can be. You can spend as little or as much money as you want to and have as small or as large of a setup as you want. It also has a very, very analog kind of vintage sound to this type of setup, which for specific types of things, and many guitar players prefer this type of setup. It's very difficult to travel with, so those are some of the cons. And it can get quite expensive to get all of these things in your chain. Some of these pedals here range from, you know, 70 or 80 dollars all the way up to 300 dollars or more, depending on how specific they are. And amplifiers themselves can range from 100 dollars or slightly less than that up to, you know, into the thousands. It also may not be practical in a classroom setting for practicing as there's really no way to mask the sound of the amplifier. You can control the volume and turn it down, but you're not going to get the same sound quality with the effects as you would playing it up at a little bit higher volume. Basically, you can take hundreds of amp models, cabinet models, effects pedal models, and nowadays have it in one single very sleek digital board such as my Line 6 Helix here. And these have evolved over the years. The early ones didn't sound that great with electric violins. They were really geared more towards guitars, and I've probably used seven or eight different models in my career. This particular model of Line 6 is their top of the line pedal called the Helix. They also make a smaller, more compact and affordable version called the Stomp. I'm going to show you how this works a little bit. There are a lot of pros to having something like this, a digital board. This particular Helix has a headphone jack right in the back of it that you can plug headphones in your monitors into and you do not have to make any sound at all. So basically when you're, when you're practicing, the only sound you're going to hear is the acoustic sound of the instrument. But in your ears, you're going to hear a full rock concert. So that would be a desirable quality to have if you're looking to have some basic effects in a classroom setting where you have multiple students practicing at the same time. Also, if you're practicing at home, you're not going to annoy your neighbors if you're playing through something such as this, whereas something such as this may possibly annoy your parents and your neighbors. Now, in a professional setting and not in a student setting, there are pros and cons to having both setups. Now, the cons to having a setup like this you're going to pick up ambient noise because there's a microphone that has to mic up the amp. So your drummer, all of your stage noise, all of your crowd noise is also going to come through the microphone and it's going to be much harder for the sound man to control that and mix properly. If you play directly into a board such as this, you're capturing only your violin sound and the effects that you're using and it's going to be a much cleaner mix for the audience to hear. Also, there's the problem of traveling with a lot of gear, the cost associated with it, and the space problem. So when you're traveling with a gigantic board with many effects pedals, a large amplifier and cabinet larger than this setup here, uh, you know, you have to troubleshoot things individually. There are many cables that connect the effects pedals together. If one of them goes out, you have to go through every single line uh, individually to see which one of the cables it is that is the problem. So it becomes much more difficult and time consuming to troubleshoot when you have that many cables involved. Also, it's a fairly heavy and fairly large setup that will cost a lot of money to try and, you know, ship. You might have to backline this type of a setup. Whereas a board like this, uh, you know, is, is a little bit easier. If you're traveling with just one of them, you could put it in your suitcase even. I have custom 
custom cases made for when we when we travel by by air because we travel so often I don't want them to get damaged by people throwing them in and out but we also have used uh, prior to them coming out with the stomp we use these uh, zoom pedals and they're much smaller we can fit four of them for the entire quartet into a road case and check it just like that it's under 50 pounds and it's really easy to deal with so when you're traveling that's something to consider once you're once you're performing professionally so basically as I explained before with the amplifier and the stomp boxes the first thing that you want to do and then build upon is to get yourself a clean tone with the instrument so to do that as I said before I like to start with some EQ I like to add a little reverb and I like to add a little bit of delay sometimes an amp model is appropriate sometimes it's not for the sound you're going to hear here that's clean I don't have an app model attached to it you're hearing the acoustic sound of the instrument with some reverb delay a little bit of compression and a little bit of EQ now the compression it works so that none of your strings become too much louder than the other strings when you're trying to sit in a mix with a band or something like that. Maybe not so important when you're playing classical music solo, but if you're playing with other musicians that that are loud, then you're going to want to sit in the mix fairly well. It will also help balance out the dynamics of the strings so that you're not hearing so many high harsh frequencies and so many really low rumbly tones. It will kind of just give you a nice smooth balance to your to your tone. So once you have a nice clean sound, I like to copy that patch to another channel. As you can see, there are a bunch of different channels that you can save patches to here. And once you copy your clean sound, I like to then build upon that for my solo patch. I usually add an amp and a cabinet. Sometimes I will add a distortion effect. Sometimes I will add a chorus effect and definitely add reverb and delay so that it has a nice gooey electric guitar type sound. So basically now, to recap my clean sound, I have four stomp boxes that have been reduced to these four tiny squares in this digital board here. There's a compression, an EQ, a reverb, and a delay. And the point for all of this being to try and mimic the sound of an acoustic violin uh, with the artificial sounds as much as possible. And I think that the YEV does a really great job. Some electric violins are very thin and tinny sounding, and this one can, can really do the job of sounding like an acoustic violin when meant to, as well as sounding like a guitar when meant to. So I'm going to demonstrate the same thing, a little tiny little classical thing for you so you can hear how it sounds through the helix pedal. <laughs> I'm going to show you a sound that took my clean patch and expanded on it, add a little bit of chorus and delay so that you can control with this expression pedal here how much and how often the delay happens. Now I use this patch when I perform specifically when I play Pink Floyd Comfortably Numb because there's that vocal effect in the actual song that does something similar. So I'll demonstrate this patch for you now. And finally, what I'm going to show you here is, uh, you know, probably the one thing that I could find that utilized these effects pedals that would be recognizable that it, that isn't, cop hopefully, not copywritten. I've taken the clean sound, and I've added an amp and a cabinet and some other effects, such as chorus, delay, and, uh, uh, let's see, this patch here. A wah-wah has been added, as well as a little bit of overdrive. And finally, sometimes there's a need when you're performing to have two expression pedals. So when this pedal can control volume or the delay time, this is a Digitech Whammy and I've plugged it into the Line 6 Helix to use as an extra expression pedal. And what this is going to do is going to allow me to do dive bombs in this song while still utilizing this for some of my other effects. So I'm going to demonstrate now with my solo patch and a Digitech Whammy attached here the uh, Jimi Hendrix kind of version of the Star Spangled Banner.
There is yet a fourth option to achieve a lot of these sounds in your performance or recording or practice situation. This particular board here, the Line 6 Helix, and all of the amp models and effects that are contained within it can be found on the sister software called the Helix Native, which you can put on your computer, not need any effects at all, or any amplifiers. You can hear yourself strictly through headphones or in your monitors. You can put it on to your computer and you can turn all of these effects on solely through that and your ears with absolutely nothing else to touch whatsoever. You can also record with that software so that you can mimic the exact sounds that you would have in your live performance in your recordings or vice versa. You can take your recordings on the road. Also, what may be nice is if you're in some sort of a classroom setting where you're dealing with recording software or teaching basics of how to get a recording together. This is a way that you can achieve that with students without having to make any external noise in the classroom whatsoever. So now you see how you can take an electric violin, you can perform through an amplifier, or you can perform through an amplifier with custom stomp boxes, or you can perform through a digital board that contains all of the stomp boxes electronically, or you can perform through software solely on your computer. Thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoy performing on your Yamaha instruments and teaching on your Yamaha instruments and Line 6 products. I'm going to send you off with a little improvisation with a drum loop behind me. Yeah.